Okay, so this is what, we're, we're filming this like a week after the fact, but it's fine. So welcome to the video. This is the video where we're going to be covering the installation of um, my Airby compressor. It's the innovative AT products onboard air kit, so it's going to be underneath the passenger seat. Um, so without further ado, I guess, uh, anything on, you would like to say? Keep on aerating. Yeah. What up guys? Today we're installing a bunch of things for this twin air compressor. First off, we've got the mounting plate for the compressor. We've got the mounting brackets for each seat. We've got the ring terminals for the battery connections. We've got the bolts and nuts to mount the compressor to the brackets. We've got two quick disconnects that'll go on the driver and passenger side seat brackets. We've got this little plug, which goes into one of the quick disconnects and allows us to use only one half of the whole setup. We've got the T connection, goes right on the compressor. We've got two plastic lines. We've got a short line, which goes to the passenger side quick disconnect from the compressor. We've got the long line, which goes from the driver's side quick disconnect to the compressor. We've got our pressure regulator here. We've also got our actual air supply lines. You can see they're fed into T connections here, so that you only have one connection per side, which gives you two hoses. We also have the ARB twin compressor itself. Got compressor, two caps for the compressor. Then we've got the wiring bundle here. <laughs> Cut! He's excited about this in install. All right, okay, continue. <laughs> we've got the switch for the compressor. It has that little air up icon on it. And lastly, we have the actual battery cables for the compressor, including the fuses that are in line with it. Is that everything? And that's everything. So, pow, we're going to get this John done. <laughs> there you go. All right, you ready? We got Atlas helping to introduce what we're doing today. Yeah, he's going to help list off the tools. He's going to help us with the tools. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so first off, we're going to need a small flathead screwdriver. We're going to need a drill quarter inch drill bit, three quarter inch step bit, ratchet, an extension, T50 Torx, 10 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter wrench, four millimeter Allen wrench, adjustable wrench, crimping tool, heat shrink, and a heat gun. And he's gonna help. And he's gonna help be the best boy. Watch him just like throw up later during the install. He's definitely going to. We have our other little hopper here. This is linoleum. We named her that because one time she went in the kitchen and ate a whole mess of linoleum flooring. But she still survived somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Using her to talk about some of the items that we might need for this that aren't included in the kit. For this, we might need a 22 to 18 gauge female spade connector. We also might need 22 to 18 gauge female spade connector and ring connectors. We're going to need a mounting location for the ARB switch. Yeah, we, 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 we don't know where we're putting the switch yet. Exactly. I don't have any aux switches in my Jeep, so... We might have to buy a switch uh, thing. Yeah. Switch matrix. TBD. We're about to go on our little lunch break right now. So I'm going to go research as pods. We also could need some additional 22 to 18 gauge wire to help out with wiring of the switch and making sure that it actually lights up. So those are the things in my Jeep, 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 Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> they will be. <laughs> those are the things that'll be in her Jeep, Jeep, Jeep. <laughs> so we are executing step number one, which is install the we're attaching the uh, the two halves of that mounting bracket to the compressor right now. If you have the same kit, you'll notice that the ARB compressor actually came with the hardware to do this. But the Innovative JK Products kit came with hardware that also fits here. You don't want to use that. That's for something else. Use the ARB hardware. So it's got a bolt and then a split washer and a regular washer for each one there. Mm-hmm. 
do two on we one can side. Do, we can do, we can do a close-up. Close yep, and you want to make sure that the brackets are in this orientation too. Notice that we have the electrical connections up here. Yeah, so right now we're just getting these hand tight, then we'll torque them down, and you want to make sure these are parallel. Yeah, well that's it, that's, that's step number one. You'll use a 10 millimeter socket and wrench on this. That's it. So step two, uh, we need to orient this port right up here so we have more clearance between the compressor and the bottom of the passenger seat. So basically we want to get this as far this way as we possibly can. The first step <laughs> of that process is removing these four bolts. So we're removing that cover right now. Just go ahead and show the good people. All right, there you go, there you go. Yeah, you have to kind of lift out on this flange down here for it to actually clear. It's not as simple as just lifting it up. So, so we're sliding this cover off right now. Lift it up there, and then you gotta pull this forward. And it comes right up. Excellent, there we go. And now from here, we can adjust the orientation of this guy. So Chaz loosened this little bolt down here, which keeps this manifold outlet in place. It, keeps, it moves this one. Yep, there we go. And we have it moved over to the side. The instructions say to move it over as far as you reasonably can. Because again, we want that space between that outlet and the seat. So now time to put the cover back on and uh, then we can proceed. I'm just testing to see if if we can actually get the T fitting in there. Sure. Well, I'm tighten it down because that doesn't look like we can do it. Travis brings up an excellent <laughs> point, and that is always test fit before you tighten everything down. <laughs> so there we go. There's that. Make sure as part of this to install the air filters that are provided by the ARB compressor on the back here. I uh, I called them caps earlier. That is not correct. They're the air filters. Not correct. <laughs> <laughs> filters go on the back. All right, so we get three wire bundles that come with the compressor kit. The first one, and the chunkiest of them, is gonna go between the, com the largest connector on the compressor and the battery terminals, and it has our inline fuses in there. So the second wiring bundle has this plug, which will go to the smaller of the compressor connectors there. Also on that same side, you see that there are two additional plugs. Those would be for air lockers, however, we're not using those. On the other end of that harness are four pins that will get fed into this terminal block. They leave it unconnected so that you could put it through the firewall if you were mounting this compressor in the engine bay. However, we're gonna be mounting it under the passenger seat. So we'll end up putting those right into that block. Now that block will connect to our final wiring harness right here. Once those are connected together, it'll give us the connections for three different switches. So you'll have a switch one, you'll have a switch two, and then you'll have an isolation switch. So switch one and switch two are for your air lockers. Again, we're not using those in this case. In addition to the switch sections, there are two wires here. We've got a blue with a white wire, and we've got a red with a yellow wire. Now the red with a yellow wire will be wired to one of the accessory 12 volt lines that turns on with the key. And then the blue with a white stripe will be routed to either the uh, like interior light connection, or in our case, we'll probably just connect it directly to the red line, and that will mean that the switch will be illuminated at all times when it's powered. So here is our ARB switch, and on the back of it, we're going to be making five connections. So when you're wiring this toggle switch, the red-yellow is going to go to position two. Right below that is position three, which gets the red wire. To the right of that is position five, which gets the white and blue wire. And then position seven and eight at the top here, get the black wire. That's fine. <laughs> it's fine. 
one. Got that plate for the switch in. Now it's time to actually lift up my seat and put this guy in. Okay, so to put that plate in here, we're gonna take out these two bolts right here that secure the seat down and we're gonna lift the back up ever so slightly and then slide the mounting plate under. Oh no, did you lose it? We lost the Cheeto. Oh, that's a Bug John. Oh. Hello, little Bug John. Oh. It's dead, but like. Oh, cool. The things you find in my Jeep, 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 Jeep. All right, guys. So next part of this install, we've got this little bracket. Uh, this is meant to hold the bulkhead for where the air hoses will actually attach to. That's what this big hole is for. And this goes... Well, on the other side right there. So I'm going to use this to mark some holes. Uh, and then we'll get it mounted right there. And there's one on the opposite side as well. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that. Hey, okay, got the holes drilled. Uh, the full size of the hole is supposed to be a quarter inch. I, I would personally recommend that you start with a pilot hole and then work your way up. Because, man, does it take a while to drill through all that. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and tighten this down. Then we're going to do the other side. So now we're putting the quick disconnect line in under the seat. The bulkhead. The bulkhead, yeah. We gotta kinda feed it in slash screw it in a little bit. We're only trying to leave enough that we can put a nut on it. So it comes with two nuts that look like that. Put one on the inside of that and then one on the outside, obviously. We're not trying to leave too much more, enough to put that nut on. Torque the Superman tightness. Okay, everybody, so it's the next day. It's actually St. Patrick's Day, so I'm wearing green. We get to connect the uh, the pneumatic hoses. I'll turn you guys around so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we've got short hose, long hose, and the regulator. Uh, the short hose goes between the passenger side of the compressor to this little bulkhead right here. And the longer one goes from the driver's side of the compressor over to the other side of the driver's seat. And on the driver's seat as well, we are going to be installing this pressure regulator so we can actually see what the pressure of the system is. The passenger side is pretty easy for routing the hose, but the driver's side is a little bit more difficult. We actually have to route the hose kind of underneath the center console, so we need to lift it up. And to do that, we need to remove these bolts right here. There's one on this side. And then one on the other, underneath this little tiny plastic panel. So we've got to take those off, take the bolts out. Alright, that guy's out. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing to this one over here. Alright, so here's our little T. Um, the way they have it in the diagram, this one, which is facing the back of the Jeep, goes towards the driver's side. And then the other one, right up here, goes to the passenger side. All right, so as you can see, this we're looking at the passenger side and we've got that tube in there. You can kind of see right in there, we've got that tube going into the other side. We gotta fit the hose underneath here. Um, you gotta be wary of the brake lines as well. The emergency brake line runs under there and obviously we don't wanna hurt that. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and run that. So right now we are looking underneath the center console. You'll see two cables in there two black cables i'll try to show you these guys right in here um those are for the emergency brake so obviously we don't want to interfere with those we go underneath that yeah so we're we're gonna run the tube underneath them that's what the instructions say okay so we have it routed looks like it's in the right place we've got it running underneath this seat rail right here underneath in here notice how it's 
underneath the emergency brake lines and then we'll take you over to the other side. All right, so we've got the hose coming underneath the seat rail and the hose runs into the far side of this regulator and then there's a regulator and then there's this little connector that brings it to the bulkhead here. And this regulator will be able to tell us, you know, the pressure of the system. So we'll be able to tell when to stop. Yeah, so that's it as far as the pneumatic connections go. The next step is going to be the <laughs> electrical. Uh, all of those harnesses we covered in the beginning of the video. We're not going to do that today. That might be tomorrow. We'll see. Okay, so we're back for another day of installing onboard air in my Jeep. Uh, this time all we have left to do is the electrical. Uh, so the first step is to run power from the battery into into the cab so we can actually power the air compressor. What Chaz is doing right now is taking the wires out of that connector so we can fit it through a hole that we're going to drill in our firewall. All right, so that's the plastic retainer they refer to it as, and that seems to be what kind of holds the wires in place. So we have to slot that out and down so we can get access to the wires. Yeah, now the little plugs cool. can come out. Yeah, okay, yeah. so we're taking these cables out now. Chaz, you have a trick for this? Yeah, you really gotta wedge it in there pretty deep to get that to yeah. pop out. Yeah, so this is, this is a bit of a process. This is not as simple as... Put the screwdriver in and bam, the wire comes out. So we're, we're, we're gonna wrap this up. It's just not right here. Yeah, we need, we need to take this 10 millimeter bolt out. Okay, so we are removing that big clip. We take that and you can just slide it down and it'll come off of this retainer clip hey. in the back. And we've already removed this 10 millimeter here. Yeah, cause we need to take that plastic bit off. Yeah, all that should come off. Yeah, and we need to remove um, this trim as well that runs along um, the sill. All that. Yeah. Okay, so we are gonna oh. take apart that clip for the door. All right, so the hard part in all of this was getting that plastic clip up in there off. It took quite a bit of convincing with some pliers to make sure that that finally popped off. But now that's free of that. We can take off the trim. Removing this trim piece here, you start pulling gently on the top half here, and that'll pop off a clip. There's another clip underneath this guy, and then gently push towards the center here. It'll disengage. And lastly, there's one more clip right there. You can see the top part of it there that you need to gently coax out with some pliers, and it'll come off. All right, trim's out. Yeah, finally got it. Heck yeah bit of a pain but we got it. <laughs> this probably took about 45 minutes in all honesty to do. Yeah it's harder. Literally than... just removing the trim. The next step is going to be uh, drilling a hole in the firewall. So all right so we're looking over the instructions here. First thing we're going to do also I should say there are actually two methods that the instructions talk about for routing power for the compressor. One is to go through the firewall which is what we're doing. And the second method is to go through the drain plug that's in the bottom of the footwell. I don't want to do that because I want to have the ability to, yeah, there's, there's the drain plug. I want to have the ability to remove the plug and have drainage. Um, and if you literally go through the drain plug, you can't do that. So that's where we're going through the firewall. So it gives you this picture here and it says find this location and drill a hole. So that's what we're going to do next. <laughs> well, it made a hole. <laughs> what am I drilling into? Oh, it's fabric. It's like insulation. Yeah. It keeps wrapping around the bit and like pulling it, like stopping it. Because it's plastic, the plastic is uh, like melting um, and filling up the end of the drill bit. So I've got to clean the drill bit out because the plastic is melting and filling in the drill bit. Things they don't tell you yeah, in the instructions. Boy. Yeah, like, like look, look at this. This is melted uh, insulation 
and plastic from the inside of the firewall. Yeah, so we ended up wandering a little bit because the insulation in there kept wrapping around the bit and pulling it. Yeah, like that right there. Like that. <laughs> Case in point. So be careful and go slow. I recommend two hands for this as someone with skinny little wrists. Okay. For anyone wondering, that is a brand spanking new bit. Be, be prepared. It will try to pull you around. Yeah. Okay, so here's the engine bay. Uh, we're just about to... We're just about to put stuff in crimp connectors and connect it all up. We've got this cable running down into the Jeep towards um, where Chaz is going to talk about it. Uh, the fuses, we're actually going to put those in here. So we're going to go ahead and put some connectors on these guys and hook them up. Easy way to get access to where you're drilling the hole. Just grab this lightly here and we're just going to pop that off there. Be gentle with it because we're not trying to take the inner off. And now, go around. Go up in there a little bit. So you can see right there is where we brought the cable through. And we good, yeah, right there is where we brought the cable through. You can see we good stuffed the heck out of it to help seal that off. So it looks looking good and that all uh, and we did both the inside of the passenger footwell and the outside here in the engine bay and it's had a, a lot of time to dry and get nice and firm there so just remember to do that because otherwise you get water coming into your footwell all right everybody we are almost ready to do the final test our first test uh, it's getting a little dark which is why I've got the big light out we've got power running back there you can kind of see the connector we have the switch all wired up and in place that's connected to the compressor as well we've got the power cable running up uh, and the trim isn't on as you can see that'll look neater once we have the trim on We've got it going up through that hole. It's all good stuffed All right, here's what it looks like up by the battery terminals. We've got ground wires running not to ground on the battery But there's a ground connection over to the, uh, the passenger side of the engine bay that we have it going to and then we've got power over there as well you can see that running right on top of the big old red wire. Um, so with that done, that is every single connection that we have to make. Okay, so there's one part about the wiring that we didn't actually show, and that is um, after all the wiring was said and done, there were still two loose wires that needed to be addressed. There was the blue with a white stripe wire and the red with a yellow stripe wire. Those needed to be wired into, well, positive 12 volts. Um, for me personally, I already had this little terminal block in place, so all I did was route it into that. Um, for anyone else that might be in this situation, it would probably be easiest to just take off of um, the cigarette lighter and use that. Yeah, this um, is a special splice we got. Yeah. That comes from the cigarette lighter. It yeah, right exactly. So this is, so the wires you're seeing are actually already broken out from the cigarette lighter. Um, anyways, yeah, and uh, let me just tuck the carpet back in place. All right, <laughs> it's late. We're going to just prove it works real quick. Um, as you can see, uh, the little light, there you go, is actually illuminated. Slip. Yeah. So Chaz, go ahead and flip the switch. Hey, okay, you can turn it off. That's all I wanted. There you go, it works. Okay, thanks for watching the video. You'll probably notice these, yes, these are the same clothes that we're wearing in the intro because we filled them both in the same day. We're professionals at this. We also have a dog here, he's napping in the sun. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something maybe. Um, I'll also say we're not professionals. Um, Professional. 
yeah, if you need professional advice with something, we can certainly like direct you there, but our word is not the end all be all. You don't have to do it how we did it, etc. This is maybe a suggestion from like an entertainment point of view. And you all. Oh.